everyone. Uh, it's uh, my great pleasure to uh, chair this uh, uh, new session today, and we continue with a great lineup of speakers. Uh, so uh, my uh, co-organizer uh, <laughs> is the next speaker, and uh, actually, I'm sure he will be happy to acknowledge that uh, the tribute that we got from Yelena was not really well deserved. She did organize the entire workshop. It was uh, she did an amazing job. Um, so yeah, so uh, I, our next speaker uh, requires no introduction, obviously. Uh, we have Santosh Vampala, who's an expert on many uh, sampling algorithms, in particular on sampling from convex bodies, and today is going to give us a very welcome status report, so I'm not going to take much of his time. Thank really. you. Thank you for that. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is uh, based on joint work with many people, and I'll mention them as we go through the theorems. Uh, please uh, feel free to interrupt. Uh, I have a couple of proofs in case there's time for some of the more recent ideas, but uh, other questions are welcome. Uh, one thing I'm going to try to do is, okay, so let me start with what the problem is. You've seen it many times, but we'll see it maybe slightly more generally. Uh, what you have is access to an integrable function f, so you can evaluate it at any point. And you have an initial point where the function value is, is it's also non-negative. Uh, you have the function value is strictly positive and an error parameter. And you want to output a point from a distribution whose distance to be defined how you want, what distance is with an epsilon of the density with proportional to F. Right? So since it's integrable, non-negative, you have a density and you want to be proportional to that. That's, that's the goal. So for example, it could be just a constant over a convex body or uh, uh, some uh, nice function restricted to a convex body or restricted to a set and so on. I'm saying convex because as you'll quickly see, those are the only things we know how to do efficiently. So that's the sampling problem. Uh, now, the ones that we can solve in polynomial time are basically uh, 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 sampling log concave density functions, arbitrary ones, no, no, no uh, strong log concavity assumption, no Lipschitz-ness assumptions. Um, and, or, or, and a special case of that is the uniform distribution on a given convex body. So for these, in fact, all we need is a membership oracle for the set or a value oracle. So X, what's the value of F? F at that point, that's it. No other, no gradient, no Hessian. This is all you might have. And of course, if you have an explicit polytope, then everything is explicit. There's, and you're talking about the uniform distribution or some explicit function over this. Why do you want to do this? <laughs> uh, you, don't need, you can do using the sampling, you can compute volume, center of gravity, covariance, you can do robust online private optimization, uh, model exploration, learning, uh, but maybe most interestingly, it seems to provide a new lens to understand convexity and optimization, and also the model of computation itself. What can you do or not do in this model? Okay, so um, the first quick segment is going to be about a few ways to sample, maybe the most successful ones. But I want to make one remark that toward the talk, I will try to avoid using the K word, okay? And you can guess what the K word is. Okay, so we will talk about polynomial time algorithms. Okay, so how to sample? Uh, well, the ball walk, uh, at a point X, you uh, pick a, a random point in a ball of fixed radius delta. And if it's in the set, you go there. Otherwise, you try again, okay? So this is a, a symmetric process. X to Y is the same as Y to X, the PDF. And uh, uh, the stationary distribution is therefore uniform. It's a discrete time version of Brownian motion with reflection at the boundaries. You can view it like that. Another process uh, is hit and run. So uh, this was uh, suggested by Bonnet and Smith. The Bonnet is the father of um, the cryptographer at Stanford uh, and Smith around the same time. Uh, uh, he was an operations researcher. And they say at, at a point X, pick a random chord through this point X. So you can, its endpoints are determined by the body. And then on this, just go to a uniform random point. Okay. Now to find the endpoints, you can do a binary search. You don't have to be exactly there as long as you have something that contains it. Let's say twice as long you do, you pick uniformly and just check if you're in or not. So you don't, you don't waste much time doing this. It's essentially the same as a membership test. Uh, and you don't have any Delta parameter. You don't have a step size parameter. So that's nice. You don't have to figure out what step size to use in the ball walk. Again, it's symmetric and it's station distribution uniform and yeah. Now uh, a version of this that's popular in practice and uh, in many instances beats just doing hit and run is uh, to do this, but instead of picking a random 
unit vector, you just pick uh, one of the axis directions. And that's coordinated and run. And we saw a talk earlier in the week about this. Uh, this is um, preferable because the per step complexity turns out to be much lower. Yes. Yeah, it's a very nice question. So, if you you pick uniformly a point on this unit sphere and you go in that direction from the current point x that's right yes so the shorter uh, so for points on the shorter uh, are the towards that there might be higher probability. yeah so there is no guarantee that the one step distribution is uniform the one step distribution is highly skewed the only thing you need to get reach the correct distribution is that the process is symmetric. Now look at, if you go from X to Y, the probability of going from X to Y is the same as going from Y to X. Why? Because the probability of choosing this direction is the same for both. And once you've chosen this direction, the length of the chord through them is obviously the same, it's the same chord. And so you can show that the, the, the process is symmetric. And that's all you need to guarantee that you converge to a uniform distribution. Right? The, the one, yeah. By the way, uh, both these walks are easily extended to general functions f by simply sampling from the restriction to the to the chord in this case okay so and then another walk dimension is the dickin walk we also saw this uh, and this is only for polytopes and uh, at each point x you define this dickin ellipsoid which is uh, this ellipsoid defined uh, using the constraints you know, the summation the weighted sum of uh, ai ai transpose if ai is a constraint row um, and it's fully contained in the body at every point x. And what you do is, if, if, if you pick uniformly from this ellipsoid, if the point you go to has the property that uh, its ellipsoid contains x, then uh, then you go there with this, uh, uh, with, 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 a, with a, you don't necessarily go there, you go there with probability proportional to the ratio of these volumes. Again, the point of this step is, is, is this metropolis filter is to make sure that the, the distribution is uniform because the volumes of the ellipsoids could be quite different even at a, short distance. Okay, so that's uh, that's a third process um, in the explicit case. And then a fourth one is uh, Hamilton in Monte Carlo. It, uh, it's significantly different from the other ones in that the steps are not straight lines. This is an actual plot over a simplex. And uh, you know, each, each step is, a, is, is, is potentially a curve. You know, so you look, you have in addition to the position X, you also have a velocity V and uh, each step is going to be in the space of XV and it will be, uh, uh, the, the, you pick a random V, that's still the same. It's sort of supposed to represent the direction in which you want to go, but rather than going straight, we'll follow a curve given by the ODE of the Hamiltonian. Okay, I think there were talks about this in the bootcamp and uh, uh, a little bit in Andre's talk and so on. Um, so to sample according to some function, we can actually set up the Hamiltonian to be basically equal to the to the function in the exponent. Uh, and then we have the flexibility of choosing this G. For now, let's say you pick G to be the identity. So this is just length of V squared and that's a constant. Then all you're doing is picking a random velocity at each step according to a, you know, a, a Gaussian. And then uh, you're moving along the solution of this curve uh, either one way or the other way up to for a certain time, so a certain distance. Yeah, that, that's the process. Okay, why this is interesting or better, we'll, we'll worry about a little bit later. So those are the, the processes, right? Ball walk, hit and run, coordinate and run, dick and walk, Hamiltonian, sort of the, the competitors in this, in, this, in this game. So look at these cases, general log concave, absolutely no assumptions. Gaussian in a convex body, arbitrary convex body, okay? Uniform in a convex body and uniform in a polytope. Okay, here everything is explicit. Here you have some access to the function. Here you have access to the body, the Gaussian is explicit. And here again, you have access to the function. So these are the, the, the this is the state of the art. So here I'm writing the, the number of steps, whatever process you're using, it is going to use some number of steps. And this is the, the complexity per step for arith the number of arithmetic operations you might need to do per step. Okay, so there are n to the four membership calls but in addition per membership call, you have to do N squared work to maintain everything. It's basically a matrix that, uh, that does an affine transformation, a linear transformation. So, so that's, 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 that's the current status of log concave sampling with no assumptions, okay? So clearly, if you want to work on a problem, uh, there, there's one where 
the bound is unlikely to be the right answer. Okay. Now, uh, uh, Gaussian and convex bodies, Gaussian is a very nice convex, I mean, a log concave function, but restricted to the arbitrary convex body, you can do it better, n cube, and still per step n squared. Uniform in a convex body, you can do slightly worse than that, three plus little o one, uh, and again, n squared per step. Now, when you restrict to polytopes uh, with m, in, m facets, m in, facet defining inequalities in n dimension, the complexity becomes m times n to the little bit less than 3.2. Uh, I'm sort of doing a disservice to the intense activity that happens in the fourth decimal place of matrix multiplication, but it's, it's, it's less than mn to the 3.2, okay? Um, okay, and this is all with no assumptions. So you don't have a warm start, you don't have a well-rounded body, you just, you just given this input and you, you, you got to give, produce a random point. Okay, turns out that in this time, you can also compute the volume or integrate. Okay, you can compute the volume, compute the volume, integrate the Gaussian, integrate general log concave function. And it's the same time as producing one first, the first sample. Okay, this second line is from a warm start. So you already have a distribution that's, uh, that's uh, uh, somewhat close to the, to, the, to, the, to, the, to the target distribution. And uh, uh, in, in, uh, in, in uh, and, and in, moreover, you've uh, may applied an affine transformation to make the body as nice as you want. In particular, we'll make it isotropic. And in this case, uh, it, uh, the, 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 the complexity goes down to the little over quadratic, quadratic, little over quadratic, and drops by almost a linear term. Okay, so that's the state of the art for, for uh, sampling these things. Now, what is the process? The winner in all cases is ball walk. Uh, for the general law concave, hit and run is as good as ball walk. Okay, I, I, I'm, I'm talking about the dependent, the polynomial dependence on the dimension. Uh, the dependence on the dense distance to the target is always logarithmic. Uh, yeah, um, right. So this is this is the this is the state of the art. Now there, are, what happened to these other competitors? For uh, uh, Riemannian, Hamilton, Monte Carlo, here's the status. The number of steps one can prove is m times n to the two thirds in polytopes. Remember, it, we're only going to use it for polytopes. And, but the per step complexity involves solving a linear system. Okay, so it's, uh, it's, it's, it's this. And so this is way off from even the, and this requires a warm start. The third warm start, another factor of n. Uh, the way to Dickin, similarly, this is n squared, but then you have here, this per step is a, is a, is a, is a linear solve complexity. And, uh, and this, again, these are from warm starts. If you want from a, without a warm start, you need to use, uh, 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 a factor of n more. Okay, and one nice thing about these walks, however, is that you don't need any rounding. These these processes are affine invariant, so it's as good as being in isotropic position from the start. Yes. Uh, no, you can make it uh, log one over epsilon. Yeah. You can make it yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, in, in general, for the ball walk, you can make log on or epsilon. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, 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 so <laughs> to summarize, in theory, in theory, today, ball walk is best. At least if you're talking about polynomial time algorithms. Okay. Now, of course, this is today, and yeah, and it's in theory. Okay. Now, this was built on uh, decades of uh, progress on sampling. Uh, various techniques came up, and almost all of them are used in the analysis of the of the final result or the or the current state of the art. Okay, um, so how how does convergence work? So I won't spend sort of the next segment on uh, on uh, uh, some of the ideas that go here, and then uh, move to the state of, status of sampling in practice. Okay, so um, how does convergence work? I mean, it's it's. Uh, in, in these cases, uh, coupling and, and contraction are just simply too weak processes. They're, they're provably uh, uh, off from the truth. And uh, so the work, the technique that's uh, in tight in many cases is conductance. Uh, this was uh, introduced by uh, uh, German Sinclair and uh, um, uh, adapted, generalized to the continuous setting by Lovas and Shimnowitz. And uh, basically it includes, it has two parts. The first part is to show that your discrete process, if you look at 
one step of your discrete process from nearby points, the one step distributions overlap a lot. You know, figure out that what, at what distance do you have overlap? So it's coupling, but only for one step uh, distributions. And the second part is a purely geometric uh, isoperimetry that you want to say that large subsets in the stationary measure have large boundaries. Okay, so for the ball walk, this Sorry. theorem goes back already to Sanan Lova it's 97, yeah. yes. Can I ask you a quick question? So uh, you, you mentioned quickly that uh, coupling methods are provably not sufficient for this. Can and you no, they are, they are, they're polynomial. But they they uh, they are uh, off from the, the the what we know is uh, is the is the right polynomial answer. And 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 what do you mean by provably? Like the um, yeah. So there are uh, papers by um, so coupling requires uh, if you if you think of it the the the, the most basic version requires contraction of uh, of of some notion for every pair in the setup. So that contraction it happens at a slower rate than convergence to the stationary. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, there is a paper for mixing of uh, the ball walk in the convex body, which show, uses the coupling technique to prove it and gets at the time an n to the eight bound. Uh, yeah, so okay. it's, it, 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 is, it suffices for polynomial, but okay. yeah. So this theorem by Karnal Lohar Shemiramich, already in, K, in 97, says the following. If you apply the ball walk to a near isotropic distribution, so the, the second moments are, I mean, the variances are all one, or close to one in every direction. Uh, arbitrary log concave density, and from a warm start, constant factors warm start, then it converges in n squared over psi p squared, where what is this psi p? Uh, I'm just going to define it for a convex body. It's the Cheeger constant or isoperimetric ratio uh, it, over all subsets, uh, measurable subsets in, the, in, your, in your convex body. It's the volume of the boundary, n minus one dimensional volume of the boundary divided by the the, the volume of the smaller of the two sides. Okay, so it's the expansion of the stationary distribution. So you see, we want to prove the convergence of the Markov chain. So you're interested in the Cheeger constant or conductance of the Markov chain. And this theorem says that up to a dimension, quadratic and dimension factor, it's determined or it's upper bounded by the Cheeger constant of its stationary distribution. You're purely, okay, this is already in 97. And so once you prove this, of course, you want to know what is this constant, right? And, and in the paper, they prove that it is at least one over root n, we'll see in, the, in, a, in a slide. So that's, that's so just a minute about isoperimetry. We already defined it. This is it for general measures. And for a Gaussian, it's square root two or pi, it's always half spaces. What about other distributions? You know, could you hope for half spaces? So general log concave densities, is a nice class because you expect that the, you can't have nothing in the middle. And uh, the conjecture says that for any log concave density in any dimension, half spaces are the minimizers up to a universal constant. Whereas for Gaussians, they are the absolute best minimizer. Uh, for uh, arbitrary log concave densities, half spaces gives you, give you the isoperimetric ratio up to a uh, universal constant, independent of dimension, independent of the body. That's the conjecture. Another convenient way to rephrase this is in terms of the covariance matrix. So if I take the covariance matrix of your density, uh, the trace is the sum of the eigenvalues here. The theorem of KLS, uh, which is used in their sampling paper, says that the constant is at least one over uh, square root of the trace. And so in the isotropic case, when A is identity, so the, the covariance is identity, you get constant over root N. Uh, the conjecture is that it only depends on the largest eigenvalue, which would give you constant in the isotropic case. Um, we improved it with the entire lead to one over n to the one fourth and um, sort of uh, suggested a scheme for going further, but, uh, but, but uh, did not manage to do it. And then last year, uh, Chen uh, 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 found a, a nice way to, to, to make it all work and uh, improved the bound to constant over n to the little o one. Okay, so it's, it's about, the, the little o is about um, uh, square root of log log n over log n. So, okay, so we don't yet know the stat full status of the conjecture, but as far as uh, the, the exponent in the comp sampling complex of the ball walk is concerned, from a warm start in near isotropic position, it's two plus little o one. Okay. okay, so now are these serious issues, rounding and warm start? Yes, they're very serious issues. Uh, and so the question is how to make a body isotropic, how to get a warm start. So you can do the following rounding algorithm. You know, it's a, so, so here's a different algorithm, might be useful. 
Um, we, we have this convex body and we'll focus on the convex body case. And we have a unit ball inside and the body itself is contained in some gigantic capital ball capital of radius capital R, which could be exponentially large or whatever. It's, it's a parameter. Okay, so what we'll do is consider a sequence of balls intersected with the body, right? Just a sequence of balls uh, of doubling radius. So the, the radius is doubling. And the game will be this. Well, the very first one obviously is isotropic. It's just the unit ball uh, up, to, up to scaling. And then uh, you, when you doubled it, well, it's no longer isotropic. Could be quite far from isotropic actually, but it's guaranteed to be well-rounded. Meaning it's trace, you know, the trace of the eigenvalues, the expectation of a random point length squared is order n. So if you take an, uh, you know, this ball intersected with the body and it's isotropic and you double the ball radius, isotropy goes away completely, not, no constants, it's factor of n, uh, polynomial n, but it remains well-rounded. So now to sample a well-rounded body, uh, we, we can still do that in n cube. We can still have r one over root n because that's really the only bound that KLS used, just the fact that the, the trace is n. So we can do this still in n cube. And so you, in n cube steps, you can get a sample, but, you need, but, but to make it the new one isotropic, so here's the game, your, your isotropic, go to a bigger one, sample from that, get enough samples to figure out the isotropy and repeat. Okay, now, uh, yeah, that's, that's the algorithm. How many samples do you need? It's only order n. And this is a very nice result of um, uh, Adam Chak, uh, Litwak, Payor, and uh, Tom Chak, Eagerman. Okay, uh, there were previous uh, bounds which were like n log n by Rudelson and n polylog n by, by Bourgain. And uh, the bound that KLS used was n squared. And they posed the question, can you do it in an n? That was another question posed in the paper. So the complexity of this algorithm is log r phases to complete, n samples per phase, n cube per sample gives you n to the four. Okay, so this is higher than, than what we have for sampling. Sampling was only n to the two plus little o one from a warm start and isotropy, but computing this isotropy is taking you into the four. So that's one part. The other part, if you have an isotropic, uh, not isotropic, if you just have a well-rounded body, turns out if you just have a well-rounded body, you don't need isotropic, then you can do sampling in, um, in cube steps without any warm start assumption. So together they give you n to the four sampling for any convex body. So the question is, can we round faster than n to the four? And this uh, result with uh, Hergia, Aditi, Lada, and Kintat Lee says that any convex body can be brought into, brought into near isotropic position using n cube over psi n squared membership calls. Okay, now two things to notice here. So first of all, like the KLS theorem, this now directly relates the complexity of rounding and therefore sampling and uh, without any start assumptions and volume computation also, I'll, I'll put that corollary up. So, so volume also can be done because once it's round, you know that the volume is fast. Uh, that's one. But second, this psi is not the psi of the particular body. It's the constant universal for all bodies in that dimension, all log on k functions. So we have changed from, from uh, you know, specific body. So the KLS theorem, you only need to know the, the, the isoperimetric ratio of the body you want to sample. Okay? Whereas uh, for this theorem, we need to know a universal bound on everything in that dimension. Fortunately, no, we can, we, we, today we have good bounds on this. So this is still n to the three plus little o one. Okay, so, uh, and then subsequent ones will be fast. N squared over psi k squared. That's the KLS thing. Okay, so um, uh, now I, how do we do this? How, how can we do this faster? I mean, this looked pretty optimal, right? You want to double, it's well-rounded, you need n samples. So the idea and, and, uh, uh, is, is the following. So we need to figure out how to convert a well-rounded body into an isotropic body without taking n samples. It's just too much, we can't afford n samples. So what we're gonna do is we'll start with, start small, it'll be in phases. We'll start small, um, the, the, the R is the radius of the inner ball. And at, we'll take only about R squared log n samples. Now, you might think with R, R squared log n samples, what can you estimate about the covariance? Well, you can estimate all the large eigenvalues. Okay, so you have this body that might have some large eigenvalues and other small. And so with few samples, you can estimate the large eigenvalues. 
it's the small ones that you need a lot of samples for. So if you, if you estimate just the large ones, then orthogonal to that, you know things are small and you're gonna scale up. And that's it, that's gonna be the algorithm. We'll do this repeatedly. Sample K points where K will keep increasing. Estimate the covariance using these K points. K is sublinear. It's in the, in the beginning, it's just polylog. Uh, and then take the subspace of large eigenvalues with a fixed threshold. The threshold will just be N. And everything in the orthogonal subspace will scale up by a factor of two. And we repeat this process. Now, uh, yeah, I'm giving some intuition here, but looking at the clock, let me, um, uh, uh, okay, so maybe this slide is worth it. Uh, so initially we're using coarse estimates and gradually refining to, to estimate the smaller eigenvalues. Why is this better? The point is that when we reach finer estimates, the body will be closer to isotropic and therefore the sampling will be faster. So initially we need very few samples, but the body is far from isotropic. The sampling is expensive and cube per step, but only polylog samples. As we go along, we're going to need fewer, more samples, but each sample takes less time. And overall, it'll still be just as if it's one phase because the number of phases is still only gonna be long. We're, we're doubling still. Okay, so, um, so this is the point. We, 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 we find these skinny directions and, and increase them. And now the sampling complexity is this divided by the ball radius squared. Uh, okay, I'm going too fast here for, for this to make sense, but we need one more crucial ingredient to make this work. Because you see, if we just use the, the the uh, isotropy here, I mean, the, the isoperimetry here, we all, the only bound we have is the trace, which is large. So instead of that, we'll say, if it turns out that the Chigar constant, the scaleless constant is at least constant over n to the one over p for some p, some p greater than one, then in fact, for any log concave density, the Chigar constant is at least one over square root of the pth norm of its covariance. You see, normally we just put p equal to one and we have trace. Now we're saying, if you can get to n to the one over p, you get here, you get to put here the pth norm, which in general is much smaller, okay? So the proof of this is also by the technique that's used localization, the technique that's used for almost all these isoperimetric inequalities. Um, and then the sampling complexity, instead of being n squared times trace is n squared times pth norm divided by the inner ball radius squared. And so uh, I won't have time to prove these lemmas, but, but this, is, this, 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 this lays out the entire proof. The first point is that the covariance matrix pth norm stays small. It doesn't grow very fast. It grows only as a small power of the inner ball radius. Initially it's N, and then it grows only as a small power. Second, the inner ball, you see, you, you have this, uh, this is this maybe the only picture I get to draw. We have this covariance at some point. We estimated this large eigenvalues. And in the orthogonal, maybe not exactly, maybe we estimated roughly like that. And in orthogonal directions, we're scaling up, right? So we, we make it uh, something like that. Now you ask, here I had a small ball. What's the radius of the ball contained inside this scaled up body? I didn't scale in all directions. If I scale in all directions by factor of two, of course it grows up by factor of two. I only scaled in the small eigenvalue directions. The point is it still grows up by a factor of almost two. Two, my, two times one minus one over log n. So the inner ball is almost doubling. Um, yeah. Uh, so that's, 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 that's this part. And since it's almost doubling, the trace stays small with respect to the inner ball and, uh, and, uh, and also the number of phases is small. And then finally, the number of samples we need per phase is small to estimate all the large eigenvalues. Okay, so that putting that together, you get that the complexity is n cube over psi n squared. Now, these are the proofs of the lemmas. Each of them is just one slide, but you can find them in the paper. So I will, this was the one I tried to draw here. And uh, the last part, which says, why do you need only so many samples in a radius square samples that uses directly the matrix Chernoff bound for independent samples. And if you have a covariance matrix and I have an empirical covariance matrix from K samples, then uh, this is just saying uh, uh, what the deviation bounds are going to be. And those suffice for us. Okay, uh, th these are the bounds in spectral norm. And so we are, we are happy with the deviation of a factor of n additive because we're only trying to estimate eigenvalues bigger than n. And, and so it, 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 it's enough for us to use so many samples. That's, that's the, so, so that's, this, is, this, this is what we talked about so far.
very quickly, but you get a picture of the thing. Um, okay, now we're going to move to practice for the remaining six or seven minutes. Or, right? And you're welcome to interrupt, uh, of course. Maybe I'm misunderstanding something. Uh, if I look at the, if I just read the power of the units of the polytope, yeah. then it says n to three half. But the gate can see it's uh, n to slightly over two m squared. And m is the number of sides, right? Yes. So if the number of sides is low, does, am I reading it correctly that uh, RA50 is, uh, is obviously better? No, um, let, let's do the thing. So let's say m is order n. OK. That should only be favorable. Just to that, the first one is n to the 3.3. .3, I mean, 4.3, 4.2, yeah, yeah. sorry. And then this is uh, bigger, it's more than five. So even from a warm start, it's slower. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, right. Good. But what is the uh, issue in, uh, might be the issue? The first thing is that for both ball walk and hit and run, even in isotropic position, your step sizes have to be small. They really have to be small. They can only be one over root n. If you make it bigger than that, you're going to step out of the body most of the time. You're wasting the steps. And this means you really take n squared steps mix. Okay. Um, this is due to the points near the boundary, which is most of them, even for a hypercube. Now, here's the state of the art in practice. This model is from Ronan Fleming, who spoke uh, yesterday. Um, uh, about uh, metabolic uh, systems and uh, systems biology and how they use sampling there. And this model has uh, 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 so many uh, you know, variables and equations. Okay, so we want to solve Ax equal to b with bounds on the axis. And uh, the dimension is, is, is you know, more than half a million. Um, if they really want to do it. The zero order auto methods like ball walk and hit and run take forever. I mean, this n squared is too much. Even after you reduce the dimension, it's still we're talking about 100,000 and n squared is just too much. Existing first order packages don't even move. They can't handle the constraints. Okay. So if you go to NumPyro or Stan, or th th there are actually more and more of these uh, working packages. Yeah. Sorry, one quick question in, yeah. in this problem. So you want to sample uniformly from this polytope with M and N. Do you have a point in there to start? No, you have to find that also. Okay. Yeah. They, they, but you in some cases, they, they, you know, the, the, about the zero is a point, but they, they let us know. Okay. But, uh, but, but typically, no, they, you, you have to find the initial point. Also. Okay. Yeah. So in fact, in, in, in the, in the um, bounds that I claimed earlier, you have to find the point for the polytope. Yeah. Okay. But now, you know, we, yeah. Okay. So, um, right. Now, if you run this, which I'm going to talk about, <laughs> crunch, it takes one hour per sample from this model. So it runs. You can even run it on my laptop or, or your laptop. Yeah. Um, and you can sample any polytope in Netlib, which is this uh, benchmark that has served very well for optimization algorithms because of degeneracies. Okay. And so um, you, can, you can sample any of those. Okay. So, well, how are we doing this? Not ball walk, not hit and run. Uh, uh, it's, it's Hamiltonian Monte Carlo for now. So the step size was the bottleneck. And the idea of HMC, as we already described, is to go to this uh, XV space, sample accord jointly, uh, and then, and then uh, move according to this ODE. So um, now HMC itself is going to be slow because it depends on how skewed the function is, how skewed the polytope is. And, and, the, and the function you're trying to sample from, uh, there will be a, 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 a K dependence. So uh, nevertheless, it allows you to incorporate local geometry. In particular, at each point X, you can use a different Gaussian distribution uh, given by the matrix GX, sort of a local metric and sample from that instead. And you will still get the right conditional on X, marginal on X. Uh, so it's the same problem, but the Hamiltonian has changed. Um, this is motivated very, very well by, so what, what function should we use? We directly borrow uh, ideas from the interior point method. And they tell you that uh, the log barrier is a, is a nice function. Uh, what it does is, the problem is the boundary, right? You get close to the boundary, you start taking small steps. So you kind of get rid of the boundary by replacing 
your uh, your your Euclidean space with this with this Hessian manifold and this Riemannian manifold, where distances scale like that. So you you still are able to take steps, uh, uh, you know, pretty long steps in this space. Okay, so uh, that that's the point. So the 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 Hesh, what we'll use as the local local metric is the Hessian of the log barrier. Okay, so if you do that, turns out it converges in sub quadratic number of steps. Remember, ball walk is n squared. So at least when m is order n, this is less than n squared. The question was, can you? Is that even possible? Uh, and on the cube, <laughs> it mixes in uh, polylog steps. Any other of the other methods really take n steps at least on a hypercube. Hypercube is an easy problem, but the point is this: this actually gives you logarithmic behavior. Now, however, caveat, each step requires solving a linear system. You have to solve this ODE. It's no longer just membership test. So there's a couple of open problems. What's the best metric to use that's still efficiently computable? And what's the corresponding careless conjecture in this Hessian manifold setting? Okay, I, I, there are candidates, but I haven't seen one that's crisp enough to remember. Okay, so, uh, so but, but we're not done yet. Typical problems have equations, that's the issue. And to take care of equations, uh, you know, we have to work in the subspace of the equations. And the metric is, is the, you know, so we have pseudo inverse here and, uh, and pseudo determinant, okay, which looks even more complicated. But uh, in fact, the Hamiltonian becomes very explicit for equations. So, so this is what you have to use at each step. And uh, what you, the, the most expensive thing you have to do at each step is a, is a Cholesky factorization. So if you're lucky and the Cholesky factorization is fast for your matrix, it's, everything runs really fast. And the total number of steps is just like the interior point method. You know, it's 30 or you know, 50, <laughs> something like this. Of course, in theory, it's root n, right? Uh, and, and in this case, it's even more, it's m times n to the two thirds. Okay, so I was going to do a demo, but I think uh, maybe I'll just do that in the break. But uh, this is a package you can find uh, online and run in MATLAB. Uh, and uh, with uh, Ronan Fleming, we're uh, uh, incorporating it in Cobra, and it's in a testing phase so that they can use it uh, on all their uh, uh, nice metabolic models. There were earlier packages for volume and sampling. Uh, with Ben Cousins, we had uh, one that was able to do volumes in thousand dimensional polytopes uh, in one hour, um, uh, but not 100,000. <laughs> and then with, uh, and then uh, Physicopoulos and Emrys have a different uh, uh, set of uh, uh, software which uh, also does volume and sampling, and they, they, it works in, it, it, it's in C++, and they reported better runtimes for some of the benchmarks. Okay, so I'll conclude, take a minute to do some open problems. First one, does the ball walk mix rapidly, starting at a single deterministic point, like the center of gravity? We don't know, okay. Um, it mixes rapidly from a random point, that's a warm start. So most points are great, but what about the center of gravity? Or give me one deterministic point from which you can guarantee it mixes as well. And I'm not talking about n cube mixing. Give me n to the 100 mixing. Okay. Uh, next, uh, when do you stop? This, is, this question becomes extremely important in practice. Right? Uh, I haven't written down constants. Everything was O and O tilde and O star. Right? And some of the constants are like 10 to the 10. So when do you stop? And here is one possibility. Does it suffice to check that the measure on just half spaces has converged rather than all, you know, checking convergence in total variation distance is a complicated thing. You, so you come up with some test functions. What about if you checked only on half spaces? Does that guarantee that you've converged given the nature of these processes? Of course, it's not true in general because you can imagine a chessboard, right? If you only, you want it uniform in a square, but if you only fill the black, it looks great for every half space. But uh, of course, how you, the point is you would never reach that if you did a ball walk. Um, and then here is a, a test that Ben Cousins proposed, which we actually have in the package. Uh, what you do is you have your convex body and after you get your sample, you just scale the body, you know, a little bit and check if the fraction of samples in your scale body is proportional to what should be the, it should be the, the, the volume scaling, right? Alpha to the end, one minus alpha to the end. Just check that, that's your test. Uh, okay, uh, of course, how true is the Kalas conjecture and on these Hessian manifolds. And then finally, um, if I give you AX less than or equal to B, an explicit polytope, there's no reason we need to use randomization. Maybe there's a deterministic algorithm to estimate 
the volume. And what does it mean for sampling? This means that give me a set of points in here so that with respect to you know, a certain class of uh, 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 subsets, it, it's the right measure, right fraction. Okay, I will stop here. <laughs> Thank you. For that. Thank you for this quick tour. Uh, maybe we have time for uh, one short question before we take a break. Uh, yeah, Nico, just give me one second. Um, so it, maybe it's an, a little bit unrelated question, but still uh, I feel a bit related. So if you have n samples from a convex body, I mean, do you know, I mean, could you estimate the Cheeger constant yeah. cheaply in, in this case of convex uh, bodies? And could that help in kind of like determining, you know, you're close to convergence? I mean, if you, if you have produced n points that you feel are samples and then you use those guys to try to estimate, I mean, is, is this- really Yeah, it, it's, it's a very good question. The short answer is I don't know, but it's close related to what I asked because to determine the Cheeger constants, it's enough to determine the expansion for half spaces up to a constant, assuming the conjecture is true. And uh, so is, is, are n samples enough to determine the, whether you've converged in all half spaces? Information theoretically, yes, actually, by VC dimension arguments, you don't need much more than that. But how do you actually check it, mm -hmm. right? Uh, that's, uh, that's uh, how do you check whether uh, your n samples are correct for every half space? Okay. Is it enough to check random half spaces? Not clear, yeah. And of course, I imagine here what is crucial is that, I mean, the approximation should be good for, I mean, it should scale with dimension, right? I mean, it, it, this is important, right? Like, I mean, it's not like, I mean, I can, I, I, I would be able to tell you, okay, you, there is a way to do this, but then maybe the error in terms of dimension would be horrible. Like, I mean. Right. Okay. Yeah, you want it to be sort of the, achieve the same. <laughs> Epsilon error using something like N over epsilon squared samples. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Thank you. So uh, I think we're going to stop the question. If you have more questions for uh, Santosh, maybe you can ask him during our uh, quick uh, uh, eight minute break. He's also going to be running a demo if you uh, want to uh, watch some uh, cartoon. All right. Let's thank Santosh again. Thank you.